Welcome to this episode of the Harpreet Singh Show. In today's segment, we'll talk to Mr. Leslie Michael. He has written a book called uh, The Angel with a Broken Heart. In this particular book, he has talked about a few things which need to be understood. And also, as a Christian, what does he feel when we talk about God? What is God and how to reach God? Let's talk to Mr. Michael about this particular issue. Welcome to the program, sir. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm absolutely delighted and appreciated very much. Thank you. A little bit about yourself. Uh, where did you come to Canada and how did you get involved in writing? Oh, uh, well, let me start from the beginning. I was born in India in Madras. Mm -hmm. And uh, after high school, we went to Bombay. L you know, like everybody does go to big cities to, to get a job. Right. I was fortunate to work for Tata Commercial Press. Mm -hmm. I took my printing apprenticeship at Tartars, and then um, I had a very good fortune of studying and working in Germany in Munich. Right. I studied at the Gra Academy of Graphic Arts in Munich. Mm -hmm. I was there for three years, uh, during which for time, of course, I was uh, very fluent in German. I could read, write, and speak German. Right. Um, my parents uh, advised me, well, since I'm out of India and I had a good training in, in Germany, to keep going. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, from India, Britain uh, opened their gates to uh, Indians, especially those of uh, British ancestry. Right. As you can see from my name, it's, it's a British name. Right. And uh, it's very funny, uh, you know, you have to explain to everybody that the British were there for 300 years. Right. And, uh, of course, they, uh, they uh, intermarried. Right. And so I am Anglo-Indian. Okay. I'm also a Catholic. Mm -hmm. So I applied to come to Canada, and having um, taken my apprenticeship in India, Bombay, India, and having graduated from uh, Munich, uh, uh, I, I just was uh, a skilled worker and I do almost just walked into Canada. Right. And two days later, I got a job in the printing press. Mm -hmm. I um, worked uh, in Toronto, I then came to Vancouver because I heard how beautiful it is. Right. And of course, it was true, it was beautiful. It's uh, the, the mountains, the lakes, oh, absolutely. And the rivers reminded me of Munich. It's really bu beautiful British Columbia. Yeah. Oh, it is definitely. <laughs> right. And uh, so I, I stayed here in British Columbia. I went back to India, uh, I married an Indian girl, and right. we came back to uh, Canada. And I decided that uh, working for somebody else was not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started my own business, and it's West Coast Impressions, which, right. uh, which is a printing company. Uh, and we print everything except money. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, mm, so while you were doing your business, how did you get involved in writing also, and especially, uh, you know, like this book, The Angel with a Broken Heart? Uh, what is this book all about? I, I love uh, literature and I love reading. At one time, you would never see me without a book in my hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, for years and years, I always uh, wondered why man, from the dawn of time, cannot live in peace with his fellow man. Right. And I was determined to find that answer. And in order to do that, I did uh, three years of research. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I went right to the beginning of ancient history, where the very first battle, the battle between Michael the archangel and Lucifer, the most magnificent of the angels, they clashed. And that incredible battle from heaven is what got me on started on the book. Mm -hmm. You wonder why um, Lucifer, the most magnificent of the angelic host, uh, he was of dazzling brightness, um, he was the bearer of light, the star of dawn, mm -hmm. and uh, he was of awesome beauty, yet he chose to challenge the power and majesty of God. Right. So why did somebody like that do that? Okay. So you go back to the Bible, which I consider the inspired word of God. Mm -hmm. And when God created the world, uh, he decided also to create a creature called man. Right. He told his angelic host that they would be lesser in status than the angels. Right. But he, being created in the image and likeness of God, mm -hmm. they were commanded to pay him homage. 
Lucifer didn't think it was a great idea. Here he was the most magnificent of the angels, mm -hmm. the, the glorious, uh, absolutely of dazzling brightness. Why should he uh, pay homage to somebody who is going to be inferior? Right. So uh, that didn't settle with him. And he uh, was of the firm belief that instead of God creating uh, order or the chaos below, he was going to create this harmony in heaven. Right. So he called all the angels together and explained to them that, uh, you know, after all these years of service, they were nothing but slaves. Mm -hmm. And they would not stand for that. And it seemed that God had turned his back to them. Right. Other rebellious angels who, who agreed with him cheered him on uh, and, and joined the rebellion. Mm -hmm. In that great battle for heaven between Michael and Lucifer, Michael being good, Lucifer being evil, right. of course, good always triumphs, oh and, yeah. and Satan was defeated <laughs> right. and cast into down. Right. So having lost the battle for heaven, he swore vengeance that he would conquer earth. Mm -hmm. And he was given that opportunity in the Garden of Eden. Uh, and here he was uh, looking at Adam and Eve, and he couldn't believe that God would create somebody so inferior to him mm -hmm. and give them everything. Right. But God had also told Adam and Eve that they had a choice. There were two trees in the Garden of Eden. One was a, a tree that if you eat of that, you would live forever. And the other, if you eat that, you would die. Mm -hmm. uh, Satan, being so cunning, right. knew what exactly he was going to do. And we know the story of how he uh, caused the fall of Adam and Eve. Right. So after Adam and Eve were driven out of paradise, uh, it didn't take long for Satan to realize how easy it is to tempt man. Right. You know, just a lie here, a convincing fact here. Uh, and man, because of his greed, mm -hmm. his lust, his envy, his anger, uh, just kept falling right. and, and falling and falling. And uh, Satan, of course, was having a, a, a world a good of time. The time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, you know, this is, a, this is a, a piece of cake. Of course, there was sorrow in heaven when Adam and Eve fell. So God, in his infinite mercy, uh, sent his only begotten son to, to redeem the world. Right. And then, of course, Satan was furious that, you know, he had sort of outsmarted God the Father in the Garden of Eden by mm -hmm. tempting Adam and Eve. And now he has to face the sun. And so he was really thinking about it and thinking about it when he noticed that three astrologers were looking up at the sky and he wondered w what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And he was determined to find that. Right. So it appears that these three were astrologers and they were look they were uh, uh, what do you call uh, students of uh, astrology. Right. And they uh, Satan suddenly uh, came up with a brilliant idea. Even though that he was cast out of heaven, he still had immense powers. Right. And in the book of Corinthians, you would see that Satan can also appear as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. So this gave him a brilliant idea. So. Uh, he appeared as a very bright, shining star right. and, and guided these three men to Herod. Mm -hmm. a and these three wise men, who were supposed to be wise, right. asked Herod uh, what I think was a real dumb question as to where uh, the child would be born that right. would be king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine Herod, he is the king of the Jews, and these p people are asking, where is that child that is going right. to be born that is king of the Jews? Mm -hmm. so, so naturally, he was uh, angry. And uh, not only was he angry, he didn't like any threat to his throne, mm -hmm. even if that threat came from a, a little child. Right. And these wise men should have known that Herod had murdered his own sons right. uh, because he didn't want them to be as a threat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and surprisingly, it was Herod's wise men who told these three uh, astrologers right. that uh, where the child would be Will born. Be born yeah. And so they went to Bethlehem and mm -hmm. paid their homage. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Herod, you know, very cunningly told them, so after you've paid your homage to the child, uh, tell me so that I can go and worship him. Right. Of course, we know that he had, uh, you know, other evil plans. And we know that after the, the Magi mm -hmm. uh, had offered their gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh, 
the, an angel appeared to them and told them to go back to their own countries to right. a different route. Mm -hmm. And the angel also appeared to Joseph yeah. and told him to take Mary and flee into Egypt. Mm -hmm. So here was uh, as, as Satan, uh, you know, uh, all his evil, wicked plans went uh, down the drain. Right. So um, he was, of course, very um, bitter, and also he realized that he had uh, given up what was wonderful, you know, be in the presence of God, be a, a beautiful angel, a magnificent angel, but he had repaid God's kindness with evil. And so he sort of uh, felt sorry, and he wept bitterly. Mm -hmm. And that is how I got the name for the angel with a broken heart. He's really right. broken hearted uh -huh. because now he has to live in a world devoid right. of the presence of God. Absolutely. Thanks for this historical perspective. And after the break, I would like to discuss with you that uh, this historical information which you are giving uh, is known. But what is the basic crux of Catholicism? And what do we need to learn from all these incidents in our daily lives? We'll talk of this after this break. Once again, welcome back to the program. The Angel with a Broken Heart is a book which talks about the historical perspective, and that's what Mr. Leslie Michael is talking to us. So before the break, like you were talking about the historical perspective, could you emphasize that what is important, that history, which we need to know and imbibe in our daily life? Because no doubt, the history is great. We can, uh, what our forefathers did was great. Yeah. But just being aligned only with history uh, will not lead us to anywhere else. So what was your perspective, basic motive in writing this book? Uh, as I mentioned before, I was always concerned as to why man cannot live in peace with That's the right. of yeah. man. Now, if you go back into our recent history, mm -hmm. uh, you would know, without being offensive to anyone, that the British were firmly convinced that they were born to rule the right. lesser breeds. Right. And they did go around, uh, almost conquered two-thirds of the world, mm -hmm. uh, and in, you know, plundered, conquered, trampled, uh, the conquered people under the conqueror's right. foot. So uh, what comes to mind is why do they think about it? Mm -hmm. And if you go back and you the, the question that has to be answered is why did Lucifer, mm -hmm. who had everything, uh, choose to, to rebel against God? Right. Was uh, the first man, Adam, uh, he knew, uh, God already told him that they would be, he would be lesser than the angel. Right. So this, uh, did that give him an uh, air of superiority that he could uh, ad adapt the same uh, position uh, and notion that one set of people is greater than the others? Mm -hmm. So uh, with the result that people who think they are uh, superior have conquered the less uh, uh, lesser beings right. and, and impose their own laws. Mm -hmm. We could take our slavery, which uh, John Paul, Pope John Paul II called the very first Holocaust. Right. Why is that? Is it because uh, uh, of the color of one's skin? Right. And um, uh, to answer your question, you would find that we come now to recent times. I was very upset to read that a woman in Italy mm -hmm. uh, who is from the Congo, right. uh, who is an eye doctor and a duly democratically elected uh, member of the Italian government, mm -hmm. has been openly called a Congolese monkey. Right. Uh, we wonder why. Why would we educated, intelligent people do something like that? Right. Then we know that uh, people uh, like an Italian soccer player who is black, he mm -hmm. gets on the field and they make monkey noises. Right. And even surprisingly, in the last campaign, uh, presidential campaign, Mitt Romney's uh, supporters mm -hmm. um, were at a rally and there was a black reporter sent to cover it. Right. And these supporters of Mitt Romney were throwing peanuts at the black reporter, mm -hmm. saying this is how we feed the animals. Right. So uh, this uh, has to start. So this attitude has not changed. It has Basically, not we have not understood the gospel of God. Uh, exactly. And the gospel of God, to be put into a nutshell, mm -hmm. it is that we must follow God's greatest commandment. Right. And that is to love one another Absolutely. as he has loved us. Absolutely. Over here, if you could uh, just talk to me a little bit about that when you talk about Jesus. Yeah. Was Jesus the son of God or is he God? 
Uh, well, as, uh, I would like to think that from our uh, doctrine of faith as a sure. Catholic, uh, we believe in the Blessed Trinity, mm -hmm. which uh, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. So if he's God the Son, he is not only uh, the Son of God, but also God, uh, uh, one God in, uh, as a part of the Blessed Trinity. Right. We consider three gods in, in one. Mm -hmm. So he is definitely God. Right. Okay. Uh, and we also honor Mary has uh, for being chosen through all eternity right. to be the mother of Christ. Okay. Uh, I would like to mention that we do not worship Mary. Okay. We honor her. People, especially non-Catholics, think that we worship her. Right. We, we do not worship her. Okay. Uh, she was chosen through all eternity. Right. And she found favor in God, and we know of the. Uh, the Bible when the angel right. delivered that most beautiful prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace. Right. So we honor her for being pure, obedient, and mm -hmm. loving of God. So Michael, like we are finding in all religions of the world, uh, there are lots of sects and different uh, thoughts which are prevailing. When we talk about Catholicism, uh, just if you could explain us a little bit more about what you believe in, like you said, Jesus is God and you do not, uh, you just honor uh, Mary. Yes, what of other uh, basic uh, tenets of uh, Catholicism are there? Well, we, we of course have the Ten Commandments, we have the uh, Eight Beatitudes, right. and um, um, you would know from reading the Bible that Christ led a very simple life, uh, a very loving life, uh, and a very compassionate person. Right. He cured the sick, he made the lame walk, he cured the blind, uh, and um, he did things which uh, uh, astounded other people. And he also raised Lazarus from the dead. Mm -hmm. So he was powerful. And we believe that he came mm -hmm. uh, to, to atone for our sins. And he took upon himself the sins of the world. Right. Uh, and he died uh, uh, for our sins. In, in, in a period of that, in that period of time, we know that people always offered sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So Christ offered the supreme sacrifice himself. He offered himself to God for our sins. And that's the basic uh, tenet of our faith, that he right. died. But we, we must remember that he died for all of us. Right. The confrontation which we find within the sects of religions, and especially in Christianity also, uh, there are different uh, sects which are existing. Uh, so what is the bone of contention? What is the major thing which uh, leads to problems uh, over there? Yes, um, the un unfortunately, uh, from the beginning, we were not allowed to read the Bible, mm -hmm. and everybody interpreted, them, uh, you know, whatever it is themselves. Right. Uh, and thereby, uh, the people, you know, can be petty, can be sort of picky, uh, and say, well, according to my uh, understanding of the Bible, uh, this doesn't jive. Right. Uh, so we. Um, uh, you know, we have different opinion, and it's not well. Ca ca Catholicism is universal, while as the uh, non-Catholic denomination, they have different uh, uh, divisions or denominations. You have Anglicans, Baptists, uh, Pentecost, etc., uh, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it's ve it's very sad that they uh, cannot uh, agree with themselves. Right. But we Catholic Catholics. Uh, are taught that and we accept uh, it. Uh, and um, uh, to give you an example of what uh, divides uh, the Catholics from the non Catholics mm -hmm. is uh, uh, unfortunately Mary. Right. They, they think we worship her. We do not worship her. Like you her. said before, right? You yeah. honor it, her. It, we honor her right. and we honor her for her intercession. Right. Uh, in, in, in the Bible, we had the marriage feast of Cana mm -hmm. where they ran out of wine. Right. And he could easily have said, well, you know, it's none of my business, too bad. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mary was not discouraged. She went to the steward and said, do as he commands you. Right. So that tells us of Mary's powerful intercession. Right. Because of her intercession, mm -hmm. uh, they obeyed what God said to fill those jars with water, right. and he turned the water into wine. Right. Like, Michael, uh, the Ten Commandments, what you were talking about, the basic human virtues which we need to imbibe. But in today's world, we are finding that though a lot of stress is being laid on theory, but when it comes to practice, you talked about racism. Uh, like, God has made us equal, but still we have different thoughts about different colors of people. Yes. So, theoretically, we are praying. Theoretically, we are doing everything. 
but when it comes to practice we are finding that that's not visible so what do you what is your message basically how can we have inculcate those virtues into our daily life also uh, it is to to uh, to hear the word of god that he said uh, we're all equal right. and we're all created in the image and likeness of god mm -hmm. uh, therefore you and i are brothers right uh, and um, i have to honor you as an equal mm -hmm. and not, not uh, you know look down upon you because but you have a different color of skin or that's a different right but religion. is this kind of uh, knowledge being imparted to the youngsters also because what we are today finding is the youngsters in all religions it's a major crisis that they are going away from organized religion and this is visible that the churches the temples the gurdwaras the youngsters are not visible only that age group is visible which used to have some kind of commitment and that is only visible what do you foresee what's going to happen in the future uh, it, it is said that uh, uh, at least in catholic schools we are taught religion the right. children are taught in religion but in in public schools uh, we have so many kicking and screaming against religion especially organized religion mm -hmm. and unfortunately we we have ourselves to blame the clergy have not behaved themselves right and they pick on that and say well look you know you're not practicing what you preach Th that is unfortunate there right. is always uh, there are always black sheep in every profession right and unfortunately that has happened mm -hmm. but what we have to look at it instead of looking at organized religion and say hey the the catholic church especially the vatican has acknowledged that there is a problem right uh, pope benedict the 16th himself said uh, he he called it the filth in the catholic church right so now we are very much aware of it mm -hmm. and, and we are making arrangements taking steps that if you know of somebody who is not behaving himself right. that he has to be brought to, to the authorities right. because he is not only uh, offended god he has broken the laws of the land Absolutely. and therefore has to be brought to light and right. and the, the the thing of covering up ha has hurt us badly but uh, i'm happy to say that we are dealing with it That's and it will take some time absolutely to do that. it was yeah. a pleasure having you thank you very much for your time yeah, thank you sir. thank you